Hey, can I help you? Hello. Um, yes, actually, I have this. All right. Um, are you a stamp collector? I'm not, but they do appear to be very valuable. They're extremely old. All right. The stamp that lost us the American colonies. Stamp of 1765 issues in accordance with the Greenville Stamp Act in the attempt to tax the American colonies. Oh, wow. I think this is a stamp in relation to the Stamp Act. Too bad my boss isn't here, because he would really want to nerd out on this right now. I'm here to sell some old stamps that I have. They're definitely unique. I know they're not like the stamps that we use today, that's for sure. I'm asking $250 for the stamps. I feel like they're worth some value because of how old they are. This is pretty cool. I mean, basically what the Stamp Act was is the British Parliament deciding that all British citizens need to pay a paper tax, whether they lived on this continent or in Britain. So they imposed this Stamp Act of 1765. And if you lived on this continent at the time, it wasn't America. Everyone was from England. So you still had to pay that tax. And this little stamp right here had to be on every single piece of paper, if I remember correctly. Otherwise, there was some type of legal consequence. Oh, wow. It says America on it, too, actually, on here. America American colonies, yeah. We weren't quite America yet. This is right before, you know, we fought the Revolutionary War to become free. They're pretty interesting. They almost look embossed. They kind of look royal, you know? It kind of looks like something the British Parliament would make. It's these deep blue colors. How much are you looking to get for it? I'm thinking probably like $250. Well, normally I'd just go get my boss, but He's not going to be back for a few hours. If you have a few minutes to hang out, though, I can call my buddy, and he knows the value of all this kind of stuff. OK. Yeah, I've got a couple minutes. It could be worth a lot of money. I'd like to hear what the expert has to say, because I'm confident they're valuable, but I'm not exactly sure how much. I'm just taking a wild guess on this. So this is what I called you about. I thought it was pretty interesting, but Rick wasn't around, and yeah. I figured even if he was, he'd call you down anyways. He would love this. Yes, you're right. These are really, really interesting. Uh, this is something that a collector has put together who collected British revenue stamps. These ones up here are from the 1694 series, which was for general use by the British. However, this one here appears as a stamp issued by the British in line with the Stamp Act. Well, the Stamp Act was a way for the British Crown to raise money in the colonies in America. Remember, they had just come out of fighting the French and Indian War. They emerged victorious, but it was very expensive, and they wanted to recoup some of that money. So they came up with a Stamp Act, which specifically targeted the Americas. It mainly affected items on paper, although it also affected dice. I mean, who knew? No um, gambling without a tax. Exactly. <laughs> I'll make sure it says America. Um, the British issued all sorts of revenue stamps uh, in the 18th century. If it says America, we're in business. Yes, it does. Yeah, this one says America. This is wonderful. So yeah. this is an important stamp. It seems like there'd be a lot of these if you had to stamp it on every piece of paper. You would think it was a relatively short-lived act. It was introduced in 1765 and just a few months later repealed. So there wasn't a lot of opportunity for their use. What kind of value would you put on it? Uh, well, the basal value is about four or $500 if you're buying it in a stamp auction. But this also has some other stamps. I think to any advanced collector, um, it's easily a thousand dollar item. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, appreciate it. All right. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It looks like someone's happy with what they heard. Yeah, I had no idea. I'm working with one thousand now. How does that sound to you? <laughs> it sounds like a little too much to me. Would you take four fifty? Four fifty. That I think maybe if it was just these, but. What are you thinking? Well, I don't want to sell them for half what they're worth, so how about 650? You think you could do 600? I don't think so. That's a little too low. That's almost selling them for half what they're worth. 250 to 650, huh? Um. I could just take them back with me. Uh, I really want to show them to my boss, so I'm going to make a deal. $650. $650. All right. Uh, meet me right up here at the counter. Okay. I'll take these. I'm leaving here with $650 for those stamps, and that's more than I was looking for, and that's awesome. 
What do we have here? It is an official piece of mail flown by Charles Lindbergh on the Spirit of St. Louis. Wow, that's cool. Bought it spur of the moment, but it doesn't really go with anything else that I collect, so. Impulse buy. I understand. I'm at the grocery store constantly, and I pick up those damn M&Ms or something right at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1928 Charles Lindbergh letter. I'm looking to get around 200 for it, but the least I think I'd take for it would be probably around 75. So where did you get this? Got it online. I don't really know too much about Lindbergh. I do know he did the first transatlantic flight. Yeah, I know he didn't carry no mail on that when he went to France. I mean, it was the first plane to fly all the way across the Atlantic. They had to put, load so much fuel on it. Everything they could cut out of that plane, they cut out of that plane. It didn't have paint on it because the paint weighed something. They put the gas tank almost directly over the wings. With the large gas tank right there and the controls right there, he had to fly with a periscope. OK, uh, literally, I mean, that's the way he had to fly the plane. When Charles Lindbergh flew solo across the Atlantic, people were amazed that he pulled it off. He was one of the biggest celebrities of his day, and he's still considered an American icon. 1928 West Indian Aerial Express, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Airmail service is no big deal now, OK? But back in the 1920s, it was still pretty new. So Lindbergh used his celebrity status to promote airmail service. So he went on a tour of the Caribbean to hand out these souvenir letters just to show, hey, airmail service has arrived. Now, what did you want to do with this? Um, looking to probably get around $200 for it. I know he didn't carry any mail in the Spirit of St. Louis besides this piece and a couple others that were in a mail sack. It's got to be kind of rare, especially with the stamps even, just being what they are. Yeah, this is one of my problems. I don't know a lot about stamps and mail and things like that. You know, I, I'm taking a shot in the dark. I'm assuming a sack of mail's got around 500 envelopes in it. Probably. Um, so it's not uber rare. There's probably more of them out there. 50 bucks. Can you do, like, 150? It's Charles Lindbergh. Any aviation nerd's going to buy it. Tell you what, I'll go 100 bucks. Uh... Yeah, I guess we can do that. OK. All right, um, let's go do some paperwork. There are a lot of collectors that go absolutely nuts for anything related to Charles Lindbergh. And the fact that it's already framed up is going to make it that much easier to sell. What do we got here? Got an eight cent book of stamps that my dad got in 1971. And it's been misprinted and miscut. Yeah, the uh, post office. Doesn't surprise me they screwed up some stamps, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1971 misprinted Eisenhower 8 cent stamps. I researched on the internet. I've never seen anything like this. I'm hoping to get close to $800,000 per stamp. Where did you get these? Well, my dad worked at a post office. He was one of those grumpy old guys that sold stamps. He sold them to a woman who brought them back two days later and said, hey, these are no good. So I gave her a good book and brought those home and said, uh, this could be worth money someday. OK, um, it could be. Do you know anything about it? All I know is that this is a good page. This is how they're supposed to be printed. And this is a bad page. Obviously, it's in sideways. And it's miscut, too, because there's supposed to be perforation there. OK. I've used 8 cent stamps before. When I was a kid, that's how much um, a letter was. Right. I never mail anything anymore, as right. far as like bills or anything like that. Everything's online. Back in the early days of the US Postal Service, they actually did not use stamps. The recipient was supposed to pay the postman directly when he showed up to deliver the mail. But that took way too long. So in the 1840s, they introduced prepaid stamps. Eisenhower was one of the greatest presidents ever. He built the interstate highway. He expanded Social Security. And he fought for civil rights. It's no wonder they made a stamp of him. What were you looking to do with them? I want to sell them. I'm getting close to retirement and like to have a little extra money to play with. Do you have any idea what you're looking to get out of it? I really don't. How much do you want to give for it? Um, to tell you quite frankly, I don't know a lot about stamps. At least with coins, they'll make the same dime for 40 years. Stamps, they change them every few weeks. I mean, it's like a field in itself. But it is a mistake, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen often. So you might have something worth five bucks. You might have something worth 5,000 bucks. I have no idea. Okay. I actually do know a guy who knows all about stamps. I've uh, been doing it his whole life. OK. Let him get him down here. OK, sounds all right. good. All right, be right back. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm hoping this expert can come up with a big number for me. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Hi, Rick. The guys call me down to the shop when they have a rare stamp or a rare coin that they need more information about. This is an interesting item. Uh, 
there's millions of stamp collectors, and there's probably hundreds of thousands who collect errors on stamps. So what do we have here? We have more than a miscut. This is four or five errors combined in one. OK. This is clipped along the bottom corner here and here, and then you have three clip stamps along the top. And because these perforations are missing in this row and this row, uh, you have a miscut plus an imperforate error. Imperforate, what is that? Imperforate mean? means no perforations. Okay. Out of millions of these panes produced, you don't see this too often. A miscut or a misprint is very collectible because uh, they're rare, there's very few of them. Some are worth just a little bit and some are worth great, great sums of money. So, I mean, how many of these do you think exist like this? The miscut probably in the 50 to 100 range. Okay. The imperforate pairs are, are much rarer. Okay. How much would it be worth? It would be worth um, between five and seven hundred dollars. Okay. It's a lot more than I thought because I thought you were going to say fifty bucks. <laughs> That's a lot less than I thought. Thanks a lot, Jay. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. The value of anything is determined by supply and demand. And errors that are sought by millions of people are worth a lot more than errors that are not that popular. So the demand is a big factor. So how much do you want for them? I'll go at the low end of that, 500. No, it's not the low end, son. That's retail. <laughs> OK. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 400 bucks for them. I am a business. I do have bills. You know what I mean? I mean, no one works for me for free, right. even though he thinks they should. Uh, <laughs> but I'll give you 400 bucks. How about 425? Four. Uh, 425. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right. I'll meet you right up front. I'll write you up. I wanted more, but that's reasonable. Obviously, $425 is not enough to retire, so I'm going to put it aside and see what happens. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing good. I have a set of North Dakota controlled substance tax stamps. The legislatures passed a law back in 1989 requiring people with illegal drugs to purchase a stamp and apply it to their illegal drugs. Who the hell ever would do that? <laughs> I am a stamp collector, so when I seen these up for sale, I decided to purchase those as a collector's item. I'm looking to sell the stamps just to get rid of stuff. My kids don't want it when I'm no longer around. What's the difference between the different colors? Do you know that? Or? Well, the green is uh, the ones that were to be affixed to the marijuana. The, no kidding. The blue <laughs> was uh, controlled substances that are sold by weight, such as cocaine. And in the red, drugs that were sold by dosage, such as heroin. I mean, I just can't believe the state of North Dakota actually paid to have these things printed. <laughs> well, that didn't go over very well because most of the people that were required to purchase the tax stamp, they certainly didn't want to wave their hand and say, hey, I got illegal drugs here. I need to purchase uh, tax uh, stamps. Any idea on uh, what you're looking to get out of them? Or? I'm, I'm looking to get $100. Uh, I've seen them uh, uh, priced on the internet for 125 per stamp. OK. Um, here's my issue. For me to be able to do something with these, I'm going to have to actually pay to get these things framed. I mean, I, I, I hate to lowball you so much on them, but honestly, I'd offer you about 30 bucks for them. I'd have to respectfully decline the uh, $30. I mean, it, if you can get close to 100 I can maybe come down a little bit. I mean, I'll tell you what, I'll do 50 bucks because I can buy a really, really cheap frame at the drugstore and buy my house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and do 50 on this. Do 50? Uh, all right, man, I appreciate it. Right. So uh, meet me over here. We'll uh, do some paperwork, all right? All right. $50 is not as much as I was looking for, but I'm going to take the money, and I'm going to split it up with my grandkids. Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Good. Got this little 1930s stamp viewer. It's called a roto gauge. FDR used to keep one on his desk during World War II because, naturally, as a man in a wheelchair, <laughs> he didn't have a whole lot of activities available to him. Actually, he was a pretty damn busy guy. You know, he's running the free world. <laughs> running the country. 
I'm here today with my 1930s Roto Gauge. It's designed for stamp viewing, and I'm hoping Rick might have an interest in picking up for $500. This little device lets you measure perforations per inch, and it gives you a magnifying glass so you can see what the heck you're looking at. Stamp collecting used to be really, really huge. You could buy bulk stamps from catalogs and stuff like that. And literally, they would just send you a package with 100 stamps from all over the world and everything like that. But the problem is, they didn't tell you what you got. A lot of stamps, especially early 1900s, it's really hard to figure out where the hell they come from. So there's little subtle differences, like the perforations on the side. So this would tell you how many perforations per inch. And when you're going through the catalogs, it would tell you, OK, this stamp has this many perforations per inch, this has this many, and therefore help you catalog your stamps. So how much you want for it? Uh, I see 500 on them for stamp sites. OK, those are stamp sites. The last time I had one of these, I think I got 175 bucks, And I had the magnifying glass. Uh, you know, I know a lot of the times the magnifying glass is not there. FDRs doesn't have the magnifying glass anymore. I like to think he chucked it at Patton or something, <laughs> broke it off. I'd give you 100 bucks for it. Uh, how about $200? No. How about 150 uh, no, I'm not going to make any money on 150 I mean, it, it, it's it, we have something really, really simple here. I give you 100 bucks. I sell it for 150 175 We both have a wonderful day, because you only paid a buck for it, probably. No, 100 bucks will work. OK, cool, man. Um, I'll meet you right over there. We'll do some paperwork and get you paid. Sounds good. This is cool. What do you have here? I got five pounds of stamps I want to sell. Do you have any Girl Scout cookies? No. Rick. <laughs> Come check these stamps out. Believe it or not, he has no cookies. Because <laughs> the Boy Scouts don't sell cookies. Oh. I'm going to go into the pawn shop today and see if I can't sell a whole bunch of stamps. I really hope that we'll get about $6,000 for these stamps from the pawn shop. If we do, it'll really benefit a bunch of underprivileged boys and send them to camp next year. Wouldn't that be great? So, do you know anything about these? Not a thing. Well, so just, you're not prepared this time? <laughs> not a thing. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a Boy Scout who's not prepared. What do you think of that? I figured you'd know more about them than I do. I figure it's just like collecting coins, you know what I mean? It's uh, simple enough. Uh, no, no, no. Coins are easy compared to stamps. They are? Well, they'll make the same coin for 50 years. They do? They don't make the same stamp for more than six months. Oh. <laughs> There's just millions and millions of different kinds of stamps. There are stamps that range in value from anywhere from one cent to over a million dollars. You just never know what you're going to find in a pile like this. These are all like World War II. Okay. This is 1941. Okay. This is Third Reich stuff. What makes you think they're valuable? We were told they were valuable. Okay. We were told that the estate collected these over 60, 70, 80 years or more. This is my problem. I don't know nothing about stamps. So the mystery is, do you have 50 bucks here or do you have... Five million here. I just don't know. But I do have a buddy who lives here in town. I can get him down here to look through these things. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Hey, Len. How's it going? How are you doing, Rick? Oh, pretty good. Good. Well, these are the stamps I called you about. My name is Len. I'm an expert in stamps. I love this hobby. I've been doing this since 1950. Why do I collect? Because it tells the history of the world. It's something that once you get involved in, you just don't want to walk away. I'm hoping to find uh, in this pile somewhere, Len, a million dollar stamp. Well, I'll tell you, there might be, in everything that's here, there may be that one stamp that is worth that million dollars. So, Len, what exactly makes a stamp valuable? What makes a stamp value is how many they printed, how many were purchased, and how many are available. And certain stamps, basically, are worth more than others. It doesn't necessarily have to be mint or canceled to be worth any money. I've heard the term postmarked, not canceled. Is it the same thing, or? It's the same thing, and basically a mint stamp is a stamp like you would purchase from the post office. Cancel stamp is when it's been through the mail. You give us some time, and I'll go through it and look it over. OK, uh, you go right ahead, and uh, don't miss a single stamp. <laughs> Well, uh, all I can say is the expert's looking at the stamps right now, and, uh, and I'm sure he's going to find something. No worth anything? Nope. All right. Worth anything? Nope. Worth anything? Nope. Worth anything? Nope. What about that one? Nope. That million-dollar stamp has just got to be in there, uh, but the, the, the suspense is killing me. 
There's thousands of stamps to sift through, and examining each one is gonna take some time. But at least it's for a good cause. So do you think they're worth anything? Rick, I looked through all these. I haven't seen anything of value. None? They basically are not worth anything at all. Okay, you wanna tell them or you want me to tell them? You tell them, Rick. Lynn has scanned through every one of these stamps and hasn't found a single one of them worth anything. Now I gotta break the bad news to Lee. Not great news. Well, I'm a Boy Scout, I can take anything. They're not worth anything. You mean to tell me there's not a million dollar stamp in there? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, recycled paper. Oh, brother. Well, that's a real disappointment, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta tell you, uh, it could have done a lot of good if there had been something here worthwhile. I'm shattered. I would have thought certainly there'd be at least one stamp worth a lot of money that would send boys to camp. Thank you for your time, Len. You're welcome, Lee. I'll tell you what, since I used to be a Boy Scout and I can't buy the stamps off you, I'll send a boy or two to camp. Well, that would be great. I mean, really, that's, that's the best news I've had all day today. All right, well, let's get these stamps cleaned up. You gotta help back. me? Yeah, I'll help. Okay. <laughs> hey, how can I help you? I have some 1960 stamp books. Okay. Eight of the top value stamp books, and then two of the quick saver stamp books. And okay. if they saved up the stamps, they can go and purchase stuff out of the catalogs. Okay. I'm here today to sell my stamp books from the 1960s. 90% of the books are completed with the stamps. I am hoping to get $1,000 for the whole set. This is interesting. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead. This is a little before my time, but it's not really a new concept. They started doing this in the late 1800s. Once they started getting these big supermarkets, someone came up with this. It was a great customer loyalty program. Some people would absolutely obsess over stuff like this, but realistically, by the time you bought enough stuff at top value to get your 80 books filled with stamps to get your curio cabinet, you probably could have just saved up some money and bought the curio cabinet. Stamp books, they hit their peak in about the 70s, and then the computer came around and the credit cards, the loyalty program started going more towards that. So, you know, we have top value stamps here. That's your stamp book that you're collecting here. This one's almost filled up. You had your catalog here. You can get a mini chest lamp table for 34 books of stamps. So if you have 34 of these books filled with stamps, <laughs> you could get a, you know, a little table lamp. So what are you looking to do with them? Um, I would like to sell them. Okay. Um, you know, the condition's pretty good on them, but to be quite frank with you, you know, it's fun to talk about. It's, you know, they're kind of interesting to look at. Um, realistically, there's no value to these. Okay. I wouldn't even be able to make you an offer on it. I mean, it's, you kind of brought me in some 70s <laughs> junk mail. Realistically, I would just pass on it. Okay. There's not really anything I can do with it. Right. Thanks for coming in, though. Thank I appreciate you. it. Mm -hmm.